Hey guys, come on in. You got Sarah, I see ya. Woo! How's it going? Thank you guys for joining me. For those of you that have been riding this wave, being on this page with me all day. Hey Nelly! Thank you for being here. I told you this morning when I woke up, shower cap and all, satin cap and all, that we we're gonna get really intimate, really personal, have some deep conversations. So I hope that you've enjoyed them. Um, this will be my last live video for today. So thanks for this journey. And I really just wanted to have a heart conversation, another heart conversation about unexpected seasons in our lives. And some people have heard some of my messages before, um, but if you haven't, I really want to just put it all out there for you. Um, sometimes we will go through unexpected seasons in our lives. Right now, for many of us, going through COVID, being home, some people lost jobs, lost homes, lost friends, dealing with the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, there's a lot going on in the world. Um, it is an unexpected season. And so I just wanted to sit down and have a conversation about that. Ooh, my even daughter's coming over here. Mommy's going live. You wanna sit with mommy? Hi. Say hi, everybody, and hi. Nelly and Sophia. So I have wanted to be an Olympian since I was five years old. Five years old. Mm -hmm. I went to Brownie Olympics, and when I was there, I decided, I was so competitive, I decided, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to go to the Olympics. And that has become my passion. Thank and you. so, okay, thank you. When I made my first team in 2004, I was so excited. This is what I had been waiting for. This is what I had dreamed of. And that moment was there. And um, we didn't actually get gold medal like we had all thought. And there was a lot of turmoil in that team. And it felt like a dream unaccomplished, a dream unrealized. And it actually kind of left a bad taste. And so I stepped away from the game for a little while. Um, and Agana Namani is one of the most amazing players. Love her personality. She is oh, just the best. She convinced me to come back to the team and join for 2008. And we were able to train through that. And again, man, we have this opportunity to win a gold medal. And then tragedy strikes. And a uh, friend's father is stabbed and killed in Beijing just hours before our first match. And again, we had some turmoil within our team, but we were able to pull together and fight for the greater good. As Americans, I think we just have this innate fighting spirit. And so we were able to fight and come together. And we got this amazing silver medal. You guys see that? Pretty cool, right? I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I finally got my medal. And so I decided to take some time away. And I think I'd probably been married um, about two or three years at that point. Maybe only spent like three weeks at the most with my husband. So I decided to take a break from uh, volleyball and had my son. But after that, you know, there was part of me that's like, oh my gosh, I've got this beautiful baby boy. But there's that other itching part of me that just wants to go back to volleyball. Man, I really want a gold medal. I mean, like, honestly. Right? Wouldn't you love to get a gold medal? And so I went back and I started training. And I just needed to know for myself that I could do it. And if I wasn't capable, at least I knew I did everything within my power. And then I walked away. But I didn't just want to sit there and not know. So I went back to training. And it was very hard for me. It was really hard. I wasn't on the A side or the B side or the C or the D or the E. I felt like we were on the far court with no coach and no plan uh, for a long time. And maybe not so encouraging words sometimes. Uh, maybe the feeling, the feeling that I had anyway was, hey, you're not really going to make this 2012 team, so why are you here? But there was that burning desire inside of me. And a piece of advice for you, don't let someone else's limiting beliefs of you become your reality. I didn't want someone else's vision of me not being on the team become my reality. So I went in. I mean, I had a day where it was like the ugly cry, breakdown, all of this. 
I remember telling this to the Prime Girls yesterday on Zoom, but like I, I broke down. I broke down. I wanted this so much. The next day I showed up. I didn't show up for the coaches anymore. I didn't show up for the girls anymore. I showed up for myself. And you know what? My coaches started to notice. My teammates started to notice. They noticed the passion. They noticed the drive. They noticed the commitment. And I didn't make a whole lot of teams within that four years. I only made two teams. I made the team that traveled to go to Olympic trials, that qualified for Olympics, and I made the team that went to the Olympics. That passion, that drive, got me one of these. Another silver medal. And I know it's probably bittersweet for a lot of teammates because we didn't win gold, but in that moment, it was so much more than that. I got to see my two-year-old son staring back at me at the stands. He got to witness the journey. But soon after that, it went from a high to a low, that unexpected season, right? It started off, we're in an unexpected season in our lives. So how do we, how do we tackle that? i have been an Olympian, that's all I had known. And it felt like my world was so scheduled when I was a volleyball player. But now I just had life. All of a sudden I was a, I was a military mother. I had to be the military wife. I had a little kid at home. I had different expectations and demands. And I didn't really know who I was. You know, I thought I was Taiba, the volleyball player, the Olympian. And now I don't know who I am. So there was a lot going through my head. And, and then I had my second daughter, or my, I had my second child, a daughter, Tayani, who was just here earlier. And it was amazing. She was really, really rough on me, but she was amazing. She was gorgeous. And as athletes, I think we're told, you got to suck it up. You got to play through it. You know, that's that mentality. And so I had actually went through some postpartum with her, postpartum depression. I didn't know it at the time. I didn't want to admit it. I just wanted to suck it up and be that, that athlete still. But I wasn't okay. I really, really wasn't okay. And then on top of that, man, my dad passed away when she was right about one years old. My dad was like one of my rocks. He was my best friend. I was a daddy's girl. And now I'm already in, a, in the midst of depression and my dad passed away and I lost one of my best friends. And so if you've ever been through something like that, I had gone into a deeper, darker spiral and I didn't want to ask for help. I didn't know how to ask for help. I wasn't trained to ask for help. I didn't know what to do in that unexpected season in my life. I finally got to the point where I was able to say, I'm not okay. There is freedom, there's expression, there is a level of awareness in being able to say, I'm not okay, and it's okay to say it. And especially within the black community, I think it's frowned upon, it's stuff that we don't talk about. So I'm encouraging you, whatever you go through in life, be able to say, I'm okay, I'm not okay. Yes, I am, no, I'm not. Be able to admit it so that you can start some of the healing process. Yeah, healing process for me was going to therapy, getting into some support, some support groups. You know, there was a time in my life where I um, I didn't want to be alive, and it's I I actually had suicidal thoughts, and you know that's not easy for me to say, but I feel like it's my responsibility to say, and it's not that I didn't really want to be here. It's just that I wanted the pain, the frustration of it all to go away. I wanted this season to be over, right? Right now, I feel like I just want COVID to be over. Man, I just want racism to be over, right? But you can't rush through it. Man, there were days where I just wanted to stare down a pill bottle or maybe even get a knife or cut or whatever it have, may, may have been at that time. But there was something inside of me that told me to wait, just wait. This too shall pass. This will get easier. This season will come back. Athletics will come back. COVID will be over. Racism one day will be over. And what I had to do in that moment was just stop and learn to find my breath again. And it was a little labored at first, 
But the more that I did it, the more that I learned to breathe, the stronger I became, the more support I got the more vocal about what I needed and what I wanted. It's my responsibility now to talk about difficult times in my life. You guys are going through something incredible. COVID, pandemic, racism. Don't be afraid to speak your story. We have a responsibility that when we know something to teach it. I can talk about my stories. I can teach you about an unexpected season in my life. It is my responsibility to give back. So when you guys join your teams, when you guys go back and you join life, as coaches when you teach, when you join corporations, don't be afraid of the unexpected season in your life. When you feel it all kind of closing in and you're frustrated and you're tired and you don't know what to do, take that breath. Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to say, I'm not okay. Don't be afraid to get help. Just wanted to say thank you again for allowing me to share my story. We're all in this together. We are all in an unexpected season. We can all come out of this together and be positive. We can support one another. We can grow our families, our tribes. We can learn to lean on each other. We can teach our kids about that weird moment in our lives back in 2020, and it'll sound crazy to them. But what I encourage you to do, no matter what, through all of this, is continue to breathe. Continue to acknowledge your feelings. Don't hide them. They're there for a reason. Love on them. Acknowledge them. Say, hey, I see you there, and I'm not afraid of you anymore. Reach out for help if you need it. After the video, I'm gonna post some links to some mental health providers, some of my favorite thought leaders. We will always get through the unexpected seasons if we can just take one breath at a time. Thank you guys for letting me share. I love you. It's probably my last live for the day, but I'll put some more links but I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you.